everyone this is akhilesh kumar bind pgt english kendra vidyalaya tanga valley i hope you all will be fine yes. today we are going to deal with the second topic of flamingo book that is lost spring stories of stolen childhood dear friends before going through the topic we will deal in a brief about the author that is anis jang dear friends she was born in 1944 in uh, raurkela india okay anis jang is an indian author journalist and columnist for newspapers in india and abroad whose most known work unveiling india was a chronicle of the lives of women in india noted especially for the depiction of muslim women behind the parda is clear so this is something about her friends now something about the lesson so that you can understand the lesson easily This is an excerpt from the book titled Lost Spring Stories of Stolen Childhood. This lesson highlights poverty and traditions. This lesson depicts exploitation of children. It shows helpless parents and society. This lesson highlights the the issue of child labor. dear friends we have to remember these points so that we can understand the lesson easily this lesson has been divided into two parts and uh, this lesson has two stories first story that begins sometimes i find a rupee in the garbage of this part the main character is saheb a rag picker what is the meaning of rag picker the boys are persons who pick rags who collect rag who collect rags are sell rags is clear the second story begins i want to drive a car the main character of this part is this story is mukesh a child working in bengal industry is clear dear friends before going through the topic i have a video clip for you now watch it first दिल्ली शहर जिसकी चमक धमक से आकर्षित न जाने कितने लोग अपने सपने लिए चले आते हैं पर कुछ ही जानते हैं कि इस चकाचौंध और तेज भागती जीवन शैली के पीछे छिपी हुई सीमापुरी जैसी एक उपेक्षित जगह भी बसती है पर 
साहब कोई सुनता नहीं है आज तक बस कचरा के कचरा ही रहा यहाँ पर समझे साहब सिवा परेशानी के सिवा कोई काम नहीं हो दफ्तरों में जाना है तो परेशानी और वैसे परेशानी समझे कोई सुनवाई नहीं हमारी इसी तरह की भी समझे राशन लेके जाते हैं तो दफ्तर में परेशानी है पानी की परेशानी समझे और सीमापुरी में ज्यादा कोई सुविधा ही नहीं है गवर्नमेंट ने सीमापुरी के निवासी जीवन व्यतीत करने के लिए पुश्तों से कचरा उठाते आ रहे हैं उनका रोजमर्रा का जीवन कचरे के बीच ही बीच जाता है सीमापुरी में नवजात शिशु की आंख कचड़े के बीच खुलती है बचपन कचड़े में ही खेलते हुए गुजर जाता है जवानी परिवार से ज्यादा कचरा उठाने में व्यतीत हो जाती है और जीवन के आखिरी सांसें भी वहीं बंद होती रह जाती हैं। वो जो कहने को तो दिल्ली में रहते हैं पर दिल्ली के जीवन के मेल करने की सोच भी नहीं सकते इस उपमानक जीवन जीने के लिए मजबूर हैं। भर की गंदगी साफ करने वाले सीमापुरी के इन लोगों का जीवन स्वयं ही गंदगी बनके रह गया है जिस कचरे को हम अपने जीवन से निकाल फेंकना चाहते हैं उस कचरे को वो अपना जीवन बना के जीते हैं इसके लिए कौन जिम्मेदार है हमारी सरकार हम या फिर आप वॉचिंग वीडियो आई होप यू ऑल वुड बी एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड lost spring stories of stolen childhood uh, dear friends the first part begins uh, with sometimes i find a rupee in the garbage and the main character of this part is a saheb who belongs uh, to this community of rag pickers now uh, we can say uh, how they would be living there in that uh, very pitiable condition okay and now uh, i want to tell you what is the significance of the title title dear friends lost spring lost spring 
story uh, stolen childhood lost that is stolen spring uh, that refers uh, spring nature of children we all know if there is a child so that child how he plays how he roams how he enjoys and here in this part when a child should go to school a child should enjoy a child should play outside without any problem without any tension now here you will see that these two characters main characters sahib and mukesh they are working now we are studying just compare what we are doing we are studying whatever we have we are doing that we are enjoying we are studying we are playing we are making friends we are roaming here and there okay we don't have so many tensions but at the age of study at the age of enjoying these two they are working somewhere that is lost spring spring now it's clear spring is season now uh, in the month of april and march uh, now see how the weather is everywhere flowers uh, blooming flowers uh, the scene is so beautiful it's clear but now that is spring season in the life of sahib and mukesh that has been stolen that's why the title of this topic is lost spring stories of stolen childhood now it's clear there should be no confusion about the title of this topic it's clear uh, and now you can explain better it's clear now let's begin the topic why do you do this i ask sahib whom i encounter every morning is crouching for gold in the garbage dumps of my neighborhood sahib left his home long ago set amidst the green fields of dhaka his home is not even a distant memory there were many storms that swept away their fields and homes his mother tells him that's why they left looking for gold in the big city where he now lives i have nothing else to do he mutters looking away go to school i say flippantly realizing immediately how hollow the advice must sound there is no school in my neighborhood when they build one i will go difference here uh, anish jang uh, who is the writer of uh, this topic uh, see every day encounters those rag pickers and one day she asks uh, asks sahem why does he do that rag picking this refers here a rag picking it's clear sahem is a rag picker in this story she says why does he do this okay and uh, oh, every morning she uh, finds him scrounging scrounging means looking for a uh, searching for gold gold here refers whatever the things they find in the garbage dumps gold that is the significant meaning of this word gold gold what is gold whatever they find in the garbage that is gold for them okay uh, sahib left his home long ago and when she asked this question sahib uh, tells her that uh, they were from bangladesh uh, and uh, their hometowns uh, uh, set amidst the green fields of dhaka that is uh, in bangladesh Uh, his home is not even a distant memory the meaning is here they uh, still remember about their hometowns but due to some regions storms poverty uh, or some other regions uh, maybe there that swept away their fields and homes due to that they left their houses if there might be storms uh, that swept away their fields and homes that's why they left their 
hometown and they now settled in Simapuri. His mother tells him about that. That's why they left looking for gold in the big city where he now where he now lives okay uh, this information has been given to sahib by his mother and the same he replies to that author anish chan when she says why does he do this then he answers he has nothing else to do who likes the right picking the same he answers he mutters looking at school i say Lovely, realizing immediately how hollow the advice must sound. She says, uh, uh, says go to school, but suddenly, lovely means swiftly she realizes uh, how hollow, how him empty the advice must sound. She was advising him to go to school, but she knows very well about their conditions. That's why she realized this. Then the boy replies, there is no school in his neighborhood. He says, there is no school in his neighborhood. When they build one, he will go. Now here they, they refers here society, government and other members of the society. He says, in his neighborhood, there is no school. If people, if the government build one, he will go there dear friends that child that boy sahib wants to go to school but he was so compelled because there was no school in his neighborhood If I start the, if I start a school, will you come? I ask, half joking. Yes, he says, he's smiling broadly. A few days later, I see him running up to me. Is your school ready? It makes longer to build a school. I say, embarrassed at having made a promise that was not made. But promises like mine abound in every corner of his bleak world. Now dear friends, pure attention here. After that, the author says, if she starts a school, will he come? She says in a joking manner. But he says yes, smiling broadly. He's smiling, he says, yes, he will come there. Okay, a few days later, one day she finds, she sees him running up to her. And then that boy says, is her school ready? And then the author replies, she says, it takes longer to build a school. But that time she was embarrassed. She was feeling same at having made a promise that was not meant because when she has said him, uh, if she starts a school, will he come? That was only a joke. That was not reality. That was not uh, that was that was that she was not going to open a school, but she made a false promise. That's why she was I'm embarrassed. She should have not said that. She knows very well. She said that in a joke. But that false promise was in the mind of that boy Sahib. That's why he was thinking about that talk. That's why he came and asked, is her school is ready? Okay. And after that, the author says, but promises like she made, she had made abound in every corner of his bleak world. Many politicians come there, they make false promises. Government, 
society they make false promises for their lives they always say their life would be better they they would be happy but after election after gaining votes they don't care of them that's why she says here but promises like mine abound in every corner of his bleak world mine because she has also made a false promise and the lives of rag pickers there are so many false promises by many people it's clear after months of knowing him i ask him his name sahibe alam he announces he does not know what it means if he knew its meaning lord of the universe he would have a hard time believing it unaware of what his name represents he roams the streets with his friends an army of barefoot boys who appear like the morning birds and disappear at noon over the months i have come to recognize each of them after this the author says uh, after months of knowing him one day she asks uh, his name and uh, the boy replies his name sahib e alam and the meaning of this name is lord of the universe it's clear and the writer says uh, the boy doesn't know what is the meaning of his name if he knows so he he would hardly believe it because uh, his name was lord of the u- universe but his condition was so bad that's why she says this unaware of what his name represents he uh, roams the streets with his friends an army of barefoot boys now here barefoot boys who appear like the morning birds okay as in the morning we see many birds but at noon time all birds disappear in the same manner we find them in the morning searching scrounging rags here and there but at noon time they disappear over the months i have come to recognize each of them she says over the months she has come to recognize each of them now she can tell the name of each boy of that group is clear one day why are not you wearing chappals chappal slipper i ask one my mother did not bring them down from the shelf he answers a simply one day she asked one of them why uh, doesn't uh, he wear chappals and then he replied because his mother didn't bring, bring them down from the shelf bring them them here refers chappals okay uh, he answers simply uh, even if she did he will throw them off adds and who is wearing shoes that don't match uh, and uh, after that uh, there were so many boys and then other boys uh, uh, responses uh, uh, ma'am uh, if uh, his mother uh, brings down those chappals he will throw them off he will throw them off why Uh, when i comment on it he shuffles his feet and says nothing and when she says what is the reason if she brings uh, the chappals down why does he will throw that but the boy doesn't reply who was saying he has shoes he was wearing shoes but that shoes don't match this is the condition now he was bearing the boy who was replying he was bearing shoes but that was of others i want shoes says the a third boy who has never owned a pair all, all his life and then there was a third boy who re- replied he wants shoes says a third boy who has never owned a pair all his life now see we all are having shoes not one Two, three, two, three, five, six, and many pairs of shoes, and of different types, different variety. But that boy has this desire; he wants shoes. 
Traveling across the country, I have seen children walking barefoot. After this, the author says, she has traveled in many, uh, at many places and she has also traveled across the country and she has seen children walking barefoot. She has seen many children who walk on barefoot in cities on village roads in cities and on village roads it is not lack of money but a tradition to stay barefoot there is uh, no lack of money but that is their tradition to be to stay barefoot is one explanation i wonder if this is only an excuse to explain away a perpetual state of power this says this she has seen many children at many places that they don't wear shoes they are barefoot they don't have lack of money okay here the rag pickers they have lack of money that's why they are not wearing the children who are uh, some who are in who are in cities and uh, in villages uh, who are not uh, wearing shoes or chappals that is their tradition that's why but this is not an explanation this is not an excuse to so if they can stay wear food you can also this is not an excuse to explain away a perpetual state of poverty their consistence poverty we can't say this we can't compare these rape pickers with those whose tradition is to stay wear food it's clear after that, she tells another story. I remember a story a man from ODP once told me as a young boy, he would go to school past an old temple where his father was a priest. He would stop briefly at the temple and pray for a pair of shoes. 30 years later, I visited his town and the temple, which was now drowned in an air of desolation. Uh, dear friends, after this, uh, she narrates and the story of a person uh, who, who was from OTP. Uh, he told him her as a young boy, he would go to school past an old temple. He uh, told her when he was a young boy, before going to school, uh, there was a, a, a temple. Uh, he used to go there where his father was a priest. In that temple, uh, the priest was that boy's, uh, that boy's father. He would stop briefly at the temple and pray for a pair of shoes. Now that boy who used to go to temple for what? Only to pray to God for a pair of shoes. Now think the value of shoes that time. Now this time we, if we have money, so no, we have many pairs of shoes. And then 30 years later, I visited his town and the temple the writer after 30 years she visited there and she found the condition of the temple was not uh, good now next case of this topic listen carefully in the backyard where lived the new priest there were red and white plastic chairs a young boy dressed in a gray uniform wearing socks and shoes arrived panting and threw his school bag on a folding bed looking at the boy i remembered the prayer and the boy had made to the goddess when he had finally got a pair of shoes let me never lose them the goddess had granted his prayer young boys like the son of the priest now poor shoes but many others like the right pickers in my neighborhood remain shoeless. Dear friends, in this story, she says that uh, a man from OTP, uh, he uh, told her uh, about his uh, story when he was boy, uh, he did not have shoes. When he used to go to school, before going to school, there was a temple. In that temple, he used to go there and used to pray and used to ask for a pair of shoes. And after 30 years of that story, 
that writer and his young she visited that hometown otp from where that man belongs it's clear now it's clear. there should be no confusion here and when she visited after the story of that man now she visited to that town that place where that man was and when she went there she found a young boy now this young boy is the son of that man who had told a story to about his childhood it, it's clear dressed in a gray uniform now this young boy is the son of that person who uh, had told her story now he was in gray uniform uh, wearing socks and shoes arrived fainting now that boy came from his school uh, fainting he was in his uniform and he was wearing socks and shoes now seeing her see, sorry seeing him she says whatever prayer had been done by that person he was his father was poor that's why he could not provide him shoes but this man earned money he provided facilities to his son it's clear as our parents do they don't have uh, money but anyhow they manage to provide us facilities they do for us the same that person did for his son in his childhood he could not get shoes whatever he desired but what was his unfulfilled desire he provided his son as our parents do that's why they always uh, try to tell us Uh, what they could not do they expect from us so it's our duty to take care of the emotions and feelings of our parents it's clear after that the writer says young boys like the son of the priest now uh, or shoes now who has money so they can provide uh, shoes and other things for their sons and children but many others like the right because in my neighborhood remain shoeless but there are so many children who don't have chappals or shoes still they are bare foot is clear my acquaintance with the bare foot rag pickers leads me to simapuri a place on the periphery of delhi 8 miles away from it dear friends here now those rag pickers they were living in sima puri this is the place sima puri about which you have seen the documentary it's clear a place on the periphery periphery means uh, out uh, outside or is of that city delhi 8 miles away from it what is the meaning of this this place is in delhi but 8 miles away from it what is the meaning because we know delhi is considered one of the developed city of india one of the developed cities of india but that place is in delhi but there is no development the condition of this place you have seen in that video okay that is metaphorically okay that is in delhi but no development is clear those who live here are squatters who came from bangladesh back in 1970 now the life story of those persons when they came there and what what were the reasons and how they were living there they came in uh, they came in 1971 in simapuri and they were living they are living there they they don't have legal okay permission but they are living there sahibs Uh, family is among them simapuri was then a uh, wilderness uh, the writer says before uh, their arrival before the arrival of rai pickers uh, there there was no one okay that was empty there was nothing uh, it is still is okay before their before their arrival that was empty there was nothing that okay but it still is and another still is they are living people are living but that is, is still in wilderness 
once again the meaning is there is no development there is no facility it's clear but it is no long, longer empty but yes th this is not empty because people are living there that's why only one thing that is not empty but there is no development in structures of mud uh, with uh, roofs of tin and uh, tarpaulin uh, divide of uh, sewage uh, drainage or running water live 10,000 rice pickers so in that area uh, near about 10,000 rice pickers who were living there okay they have lived uh, there uh, for more than 30 years from 30 years uh, they were living there they are living there without an identity they don't have any identity without uh, permits but uh, with ration cards uh, that get their names on orders but they have ration cards so that uh, they can get uh, groceries and uh, names on orders and they have also order id card list and enable them to buy grain that's why with the help of those ration cards they can buy grain food is more important for survival than an identity uh, here uh, she says because for them food is more important uh, for their survival and not uh, an identity if persons uh, don't know uh, them so that is not uh, here important what is important for them that is food if at the end of the day we can feed our families and go to bed without an aching uh, stomach uh, we would rather live here than in the fields that uh, gave us no grain after that uh, the members uh, says uh, say a group of women uh, in a tattered uh, saris uh, when i ask uh, them why they lived uh, there beautiful land of green fields and rivers uh, the writer was there uh, she asked a group of women uh, why did they live their hometowns uh, and green fields uh, 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 of uh, that uh, Bangladesh then they replied if at the end of the day if they are able to feed themselves at the end of the day not uh, during day at least in the night if they are able to feed themselves so that is better place for them uh, better place for them uh, <clears throat> okay and due to that reason because in Dhaka, in Bangladesh, they were not able to feed their valleys. That's why they left their beautiful place, fields and rivers. Wherever they find food, they pitch their tents that become transit homes. See, they say that wherever they find food, they pitch their tent and they live there. Children grow up in them becoming partners in survival uh, the ladies of that area say children grow up in them uh, in them and becoming partners in survival in that tent children grow up and they become partners in their survival how doing their work that is rag picking and survival in Simapuri means rag picking only. There is no other work in that Simapuri. What is only that is rag picking. Through the years, it has acquired the proportions of fine art. Now, uh, they, they were there uh, near about from uh, 30 years. That's why now that is their art is crouching uh, something from the dumps of garbage. Uh, it is their daily bed. Uh, garbage to them is gold. Now here the important point: garbage is them is gold. This word has been refer referred many times in, in this topic, gold, because gold is the means of their survival, and uh, this gold is the things which they find from the garbage. That's why they say garbage to them is gold because this is only the means of their survival it is their daily bread that garbage from there they find something they sell and they find their daily bread that's why they are giving too much importance to that garbage a roof over their heads even if it is a leaking roof but for a child it is even more but for a child that 
dumps that garbage is even more. Now the feeling of children. This part was the feeling of elder ones. Now the feeling of children. I sometimes find a rupee, even a 10 rupee note. Sahib says his eyes lighting off. When you can find a silver coin in a heap of garbage, you don't stop scrounging. For there is hope of finding more. It seems that for children, garbage has a meaning different from what it means to their parents. For the children, it is wrapped in wonder. For the elders, it is means of survival. Dear friends, sometimes uh, a question is asked from this part. For the children, it is wrapped in wonder. For the elders, it is means of survival. And uh, sometimes, uh, this uh, the question carries uh, six marks. So be careful here. The feeling and the saying of elderly people we can compare here. What they what they do? Whatever they find in the garbage, they just sell and earn money and uh, for their delivery. Okay. But children, as we all know, how the children are. What? Uh, Sahib says sometimes she finds a rupee, even a 10 rupee note in the garbage. And now see if a child finds something like this, so what they what do they do? They try to find more. Uh, suppose uh, if we find if we people find a silver coin, silver coin, so what we will do? We will also do the same. We will try to search uh, in hope of getting more. The same the children, the right pickers used to do. And in garbage, they used to find some more things like toys, like uh, uh, shoes, like other things. And they used to play with those things. That's why for the children, it is wrapped in wonder. And for the elders, it is means of survival. Okay, now here listen. If the elderly people, if elders find something, what they do? They just sell. They don't have that pleasure, that enjoyment uh, like of those children. But children, when they find something, they become so happy. That's why they uh, used to search uh, uh, more and more in that garbage. And they used to find some more things like toys and other things. It's clear. One winter morning, I see Sahim standing by the fenced uh, gate of the neighborhood uh, club, watching two young men dressed in white uh, playing tennis i like the game he hums content to watch is he standing behind the fence okay after that as uh, she says uh, one winter morning uh, one day she sees uh, sahib standing by the fence to gate of the neighborhood club where two young men dressed in white uh, dress they uh, playing tennis and what he's doing there then uh, he replies he likes the game and uh, he uh, feels very calm and relaxed when he sees them uh, playing. It's clear. So now we can see there was a desire of uh, playing also. Uh, what was first desire? He wanted to go to school. Now he wanted to play as every child wants. It's clear. So friends, uh, this is the uh, last phase of the first part of uh, this topic. Uh, I go inside when no one is around. He admits the gatekeeper lets me use the swing, and uh, then uh, Sahib says to her, uh, says to her, uh, he goes inside uh, that uh, club when no one is around because the gatekeeper lets him use the swing of that club. Okay, so th this is the desire and this is the uh, like of uh, that uh, child, that uh, Sahib. He wants to study, but there is no school. He wants to play, but he has no dress. He has no uniform and he was so compelled. Now we can feel <coughs> the emotions of those children who don't have such facilities. Saif to his wearing a tennis shoes uh, that look strange over his uh, discolored shirt and shorts. That time uh, she finds Saif to his wearing tennis shoes that look strange over his uh, discolored shirt and shorts. 
but he was not uh, in that uh, tennis uh, dress but he was wearing a shoes uh, someone gave them to me he says in the manner of an explanation and uh, when she says from where he got uh, that shoes he, he replies uh, someone gave him gave him okay the fact that that they are discarded shoes of some rich boy why uh, someone gave him because that was not in bad condition that's why someone gave him that was discarded by uh, some rich boy who perhaps refused to wear them because of a hole in one of them uh, the shoes which uh, uh, sai was wearing that time in one of them there was hole that's why that was discarded doesn't bother him but but for sai doesn't bother him he doesn't care whether there is hole or not for one who has walked barefoot uh, even shoes with a hole uh, is a dream come true but the game uh, he is watching so intently is out of his reach here uh, the writer says uh, yes uh, if a person if a boy or person doesn't have even a chappal if uh, that person uh, finds any how so that is uh, a dream uh, fulfill fulfillment fulfillment like okay but the game is uh, he is watching so intently is out of his reach but the game which he is watching that time that is out of his reach uh, we can say this because he is so poor and he can't play that tennis game due to his poverty okay this morning sahib is on his way to th um, to the milk booth in his hand is a steel canister i know i now work in a tea stall down the road he says pointing in the distance i am paid 800 rupees and all my meals does he like the job i ask his face i see has lost the carefree look the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag he would carry so lightly over his shoulder the bag was his the canister belongs to the man who owns the tea shop sahib is no longer no longer his own master and one day what happens uh, she finds uh, sahib is on his way to the milk booth sahib is going towards a milk booth and in his hands there is a steel canister earlier what he used to carry a plastic bag okay a plastic bag but on that day in his hand there was a steel canister and when she is asked what the reason what he is doing there where is going then the boy replies now he works in a tea stall down the road he says pointing in the distance he pointed that shop that tea stall where he is now working is clear and he also says now he is paid 800 rupees and all his meals does he like the job uh, i ask his face and then she observes and finds he has lost the carefree look when he was a right picker that time he was free to go here and there he was happy at least to find something to go where he likes but now he was working he was working in a tea, a tea stall where he was not free okay earlier he was owner of his own bill because he can go where he desires but now here he is no longer of his own will he is no uh, longer of his own master dear friends this happens is clear there the steel canister seems heavier than the plastic bag earlier the bag he which he used to carry that seems now this time that seems heavier than the plastic bag what seems heavier that steel canister because the meaning is here the bag was his why that bag uh, didn't uh, uh, seem heavier because that was his own but that canister belongs to the man who owns the tea shop 
Saib is no longer his own master. Sometimes the question is asked from here. So now properly remember this. If any doubt, so you can ask me. It's clear. I hope you would be able to understand the topic. Friends, now these are some points about the character Sahem. Okay, so after the text, after reading the text, uh, you would be able to tell us uh, what uh, what's about the topic and what uh, what is the problem. Okay, so these are some points. Uh, see uh, see these points uh, so that you can make a list about the main character Sahem. He was. Uh, migrants, uh, they were migrants from Dhaka and lives in Simapuri. They left green fields, a storm destroyed their fields and home. Why, why, why did they leave their hometown? Because their, their fields and home were destroyed by storms. Saive Alam means Lord of the Universe, ironical here. Why this is here ironical? Because he is so poor, but the name is Lord of the Universe. Saive is presented as a right picker at the beginning. Later, he works in a tea stall and earns rupees 800. Saib has a master now, the tea shop owner. Saib has a mas master now, the tea shop owner. Okay. Now, he's working there. That's why he has a master in that tea stall. Saib no longer he his own master. Now, Saib is no longer of his own bill. Okay. These are some other points. Uh, so seize this and uh, remember these points. Now you can tell me the theme of uh, this part first or this lesson, this topic. And the theme is flight of straight children, forced labor in the early life, denied opportunity of schooling, Society and political class are responsible for such uh, situations. So uh, these four are the themes of this topic. Lost Spring stories from uh, stolen childhood. It's clear. These are some questions, uh, and in second part, I will provide you some more questions. So uh, you have to make notes of these questions. It's clear. Thank you everyone.